Hey guys, and welcome back to Europe in Detail. In this episode, we do a little bit of everything. We put some buildings down, we do some urban detailing, we do some nature detailing, and we even put in a car park. I know, shock, horror, but it had to be done, and I will explain why when we get there. This episode also sort of signifies the last of the buildings going down. There's going to be another episode focused on finishing this off properly, but we really put the last of the buildings and proper infrastructure down in this episode. So we're predominantly focusing on this area here towards the back of the valley. We're pretty much going to fill this right in with buildings here and there is a couple of particular builds of interest that are included in this area that we'll dive into when the time comes. So I gotta say, I'm a bit of a mixed bag emotionally at the moment. I'm quite sad that we're gonna finish up with Borgavino really soon because it's just been a blast to build and it's been so enjoyable sharing it with all of you guys and getting all of the neat comments. But I am also very excited about pushing on and starting this next town. And I've been researching all of your suggestions and I've looked at pretty much all of them. And I reckon I've got them down to probably my top five. I don't know, it's, it's a hard choice, but yeah, I think I've got my top five. So we'll whittle down from there. But whatever it's going to be, it is going to be something unique, it's going to be something different, and of course it's got to be pretty interesting. So, anyway, we've started this episode with more buildings being placed along our main road here. We've got most of our services using this road here for access, and there isn't any street level detailing here whatsoever. It's more about just placing these buildings in as tight as I can get them to this roadway. Next I wanted to place in another road that went a handful of metres above that main service road we just built on. This is mainly because I want to gain a little bit of elevation and put a church up here with a bit of a view back down the valley over the rest of the town. This is going to follow a bit of a real life blueprint from Manarola. There's a church there that's called San Lorenzo and it has a view back over town that looks pretty cool and even though I'm not building this like for like, it's going to have that same sort of buzz to it. So in the end, in order for this road to gain that height in a really short space, I've had to make a bit of an S-bend, which actually ends up looking really cool at the end of the episode. So after that road reaches the apex, it runs off down the side of the hill here, nice and gently, and into this intersection. And this intersection is basically going to be the far border of our town. So I use node controller also on that intersection to make it look a little bit better and a little bit wider. We're also going to put our car parks off this intersection later on. And then I switch focus to trying to get this terrain flat and make sort of buildable areas, especially up where I want to put this church. I actually want to include a cemetery with it as well and I need a bit of flat ground to do it properly. So you can also see here that I've put some cube services in. These are pretty essential and unfortunately I couldn't find any actual buildings that went well with the aesthetics we're going for in the town. So these cube services just get hidden in some of the buildings. One of them here is a university and it generates a heap of people so I think I end up slipping that in the church and the rest of these cube services here I think are just fire and police and pretty straightforward ones like that and they just get hidden randomly in random buildings but I try and keep those ones along that main roadway so they've got good access to the rest of the town so once I had finished hand placing buildings around the tightest curves I really made a point to fill this entire block in with buildings I'm also trying to be as careful as I can to place them together so that I'm not covering windows or having it look like any roofs are cutting into other buildings sort of unnecessarily. I mean, it's almost impossible to get that perfect, but yeah, I'm just trying to be conscious when I place them in against each other. Some of you will also be pleased to hear that Xarix has released some new Italian style buildings on the workshop that look really old. There's heaps of cracked plaster and damaged facades and I've got those here and I'm using them. They look fantastic. Most 
most of these little towns in the Cinque Terre have these car parks right at the very edge of them because from this point on it's pedestrian only. Some of these car parks are actually massive. There might not be one single one that's massive but there's one particular town where they have a lot of little wee car parks actually a surprising amount of little wee car parks and i guess that's because the roadways around here are just as much a tourist attraction as these towns some of the roads are crazy and yeah they'd probably be a lot of fun to drive on so i guess the other thing worth noting here that we build is we carry on with our little stream that we put down in an earlier episode and I want to sort of make it look like it goes into a tunnel and maybe it goes under the town and meets up with the one we built earlier. And this is actually closely following a real life blueprint from Venazia, which is one of the towns in the Cinque Terre. They have a very similar setup to what I'm building here. And they actually built it after they had a terrible flood in the early 90s, where it ripped out probably a good half of the town. So these are actually flood controls, these little canals. And there is sections of it in real life that go under the town. So to make it here in game, I'm using Terra Networks to sink the ground down a little bit more accurately. I turn a small part of the road into a bridge. I put some rocks in the bottom of the canal as well as some prop waterfalls with PO to lay them flat. And then I finish off the area with a few stain decals on the ground, a few prop cars in the car parks and some road signs entering and exiting the town. So before we carry on with the church, I want to finish the hill up behind the town here. And this includes putting a little bit of grass down, but mostly it's, you guessed it, cliffs. And the idea with putting these cliffs in is the same as it's always been, and that is just to try and work with the shape of the natural terrain. So this would mean that our cliffs are sort of accentuating the steeper parts of the terrain. It wouldn't really make sense to have any of these rocks sticking out of any valleys, for instance. So if any of you guys are struggling to find any good cliff or rock prop assets on the workshop, to find these ones here that I'm using, you need to type in VC outcrops or outcrop rocks, something of the like. The creator's name is Vecchio Cristo. I've talked about him before. He doesn't have much on his workshop, but what he does have is very high quality and worth checking out. Even though you'll see me use procedural objects with his cliff props here, the majority of the time they still perform beautifully, even without procedural objects, and are really easy to use as well. So looking back now, we've finished all our cliff, all our car park areas done. We've got most of the buildings in except this last little piece here to do. So let's flip back and really start filling this in now. With these buildings here that you see me putting in, I'm trying to put them in in such a way that I create a little bit of a natural square here where the road is. I'm planning on paving this a different sort of a colour and having a fountain here and just a bit of a pedestrian friendly area of the road and this being right next to our funicular station that we put in last episode I sort of want this to blend in with that as well and have good access up to that station. Now we can finally build our church here. I'm basing this off San Lorenzo in Manarola. And you can see here that it's elevated and it's got this really cool and unique decal pattern around the base of it. And it just very much looks like an iconic part of the town. And I do a couple of my own unique things to make this building and area stand out a bit. The first thing I do is obviously put the church building down. And I'm using this one here. I'm pretty sure it's from Xarex and it looks very similar to one that we would see in the Cinque Terre area. The next thing I want to do is put the cemetery in and I use a combination of real cemeteries and cemeteries that have been manipulated with procedural objects to make them fit a bit better. But all in all, having a cemetery in the town makes a huge amount of sense for so many reasons. So with our version here, 
I sort of make a terraced version because it's running up a hill somewhat. So once I've got some of these headstones and gravestones turned to procedural objects, I can use Terra Networks to straighten out two levels of the ground, put in our gravestones and then connect the two of them with an old stone stair set and then I try and just make the whole area look really old and yeah to be honest creepy. I want it to make it sort of a place where you don't want to be at night and I think the way that it backs onto the cliffside and onto the sort of scrubby looking grass gives it more of that eerie feeling as well. But of course there's probably still a lot of people in the town that like to come and visit it during the day so it still has to look, you know, nice and presentable during the day. Maybe a little overgrown somewhat, but yeah, it's still got to look like people come and visit here often. This church is sitting beautifully up on this little hillside here that we've created and there's a really nice view back over town and as such there's a really nice view back up at the church as well which is why I've decided to put this statue out the front here because this is really visible. You guys can take a guess at what you think the statue might represent but the other thing worth noting up here is I use the actual decal pattern from Manarola that we've seen earlier here on the ground and try and fan it out so it looks like these decals are drawing you into the front door of the church. The rest of the area is mainly gardens and overgrown gardens at that, especially in and around the cemetery. I put some decals on the ground to make it look like there's been lots of foot traffic around and some hedges and the area looks really good and most importantly aged when it's finished. I use a combination of real buildings and buildings manipulated with procedural objects here to finish off the town here and really established the final shape, I guess. the church was a big part of the vision for this for me. The statue out the front of the church I really want lit up at night so that we can see it from across the other side of town sort of thing without it looking like it's got airport runway lights lighting it up. For the rest of the area predominantly above the roads I use the softer yellow light that I've used around the rest of the city not only for that nice soft yellow glow but also because it's on the string which looks pretty cool hanging across the street. So aside from the light lighting up the statue I also want some lights on the front of the church and I use the same light that I used on the funicular station. It's the little lamp that connects to the side of a building or a wall and I love it on the front of the church because it really shows up the old stone texture at night. So you can see here the white light that I'm using for the statue was way too bright so I pushed it way down in the ground and then I made my own little prop light and put that on the surface to make it look like like the glow was coming from there.
decided to swing back and detail some of the bits of the town that I've really just been procrastinating with. Also there's some parts of these cliffs that I've had here for a while but every time I look at them I'm just not 100% on them so I think I'd change them. You see me here sort of trying to add grass to the top of them but eventually I take this bit right out and just make it sort of the same cliff texture all the way up from the bottom to the path at the top. I think this much simpler looking cliff just looks a little bit better and the way that it meets the path looks a little bit more appropriate and the path looks like it's sort of been cut into the hillside. So speaking of the path now I can run some fences along the edge of it and detail it up a little bit more and I've tried to vary these areas a little bit with the detailing as well. I've got different fences in, some of them look a little bit older like these wooden ones here and I've also tried to add like some foliage creeping up them and overgrown shrubs around them and stuff like that too. There's also a few prop doors around the place that I'm yet to place in that I do here because some of the people are just walking straight into the sides of buildings. And then we throw a few decals down and things like that and then move on to the next area. So this bit here was another relatively tricky area. I mean, that could be said for most of the town to be fair. And I've used an old stone retaining wall here between these levels. And one thing I will say about these retaining walls is that yes, obviously because of the terrain there's a lot of them, but they really only have them in areas where they desperately need them. Otherwise they just leave nature to it. So in other words, they don't build massive retaining walls right along the side of a cliff unless it's absolutely necessary. And I would class this area here as absolutely necessary. It's right in the urban space. There'll be a lot of foot traffic through here and there might be 50 or 60 people that call this their community. So it's well used. I mentioned in the last episode that I wanted to add to the vineyards in the winery that we made and we're going to do it right now. So I guess the biggest thing that's going to set at least a part of this winery apart from the rest of the terraced hills around Borgovino is going to be that these are going to be terraced with these retaining walls. Now the reason I haven't used many of these for the other terraced areas in the town is because there isn't actually many in real life. It's pretty much just dirt banks in real life so, and I was sticking true to that obviously, but here at the winery this is a little bit more my creation and these really nice vineyard retaining walls from Ronix are just too good not to use here. Next I wanted to make a little pathway over the funicular for the workers, but I wanted to make this one look a little bit different. I wanted it to look old and a little bit unmaintained and certainly not for tourists. I'm also going to put some little random sheds around this area, maybe they're potting sheds or something like that and like a covered in tarp area, but I really love the way this area looks overgrown with just props and random stuff lying everywhere when it's finished. We've got one more episode in Borgovino before we move on to our new town and it is definitely a bittersweet moment. It's not too late to get your suggestions in for where you think I should build next or what I should base it on. If you know a cool little quirky town somewhere, please chuck it in the comments by all means. And I don't want to give too much away, but I'm 90% locked in with a guest creator for maybe early next year and 
it is one heck of a talented builder and someone I have looked up to for a long time. So that is all I'm going to say on that. Please hit that thumbs up if you guys have enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs down if you haven't. <laughs> and hopefully I see you guys in the next episode where we can finish Borgavino off. Take it easy guys. See you later.